Hello and welcome to The Quilling Quarter. Today I want to take you through what I've done in the last couple of weeks, I reflect on the challenge and the art of the challenge, then I want to let you know what I'm planning next and where I can get your help. Since my last reflection video I've finished the Quill November challenge which I'm going to go through in a second and I posted the Creativity Inc book review and I also posted the how to make a thank you card video. So in my last reflection I took you through the first half of the Quill November challenge pieces that I made so this time I'm going to take you through the remaining pieces. 15th of November was Bunny. I bought a Chinese quilling how-to book a few months ago and I saw that it had a design for a rabbit and so I made this rabbit and this is the first time I've used the Chinese quilling technique. So this is the book that the design came from. This will be my next book review and I'm going to make a couple more designs from this book because I really like this technique. It's kind of like line drawing. 16th of November was Mushroom. This is one of my first 3D pieces and I just think it is adorable. I'm so happy with it. Another technique that it made me use was you make a tight coil um, and then you pop the center out to make a cone sort of shape. The 17th of November was book. With some of these challenge pieces, I was only doing them the night before, but I wanted to make sure I was posting them on the day of the challenge. So the 17th of November, I was working on the 16th of November and I was uh, racing against the clock. You can see what I posted is slightly different to what's here and the reason for that is because I it was about 11 o'clock at night and I just wanted to finish the piece and so I got a whole lot of leftover bits of quilling that I've just sit, got sitting in a box like things that don't quite make it into designs but I don't want to throw away um, and I just sort of arranged it on top they, they didn't get glued down so this is <laughs> all I've got left so you can see it's still the book but it just doesn't have all the ideas coming out of it like it did in the one that was posted to Instagram <laughs> 18th of November was love and so I posted hearts one of the cards I think I've already actually gifted now and these were designs that I'd already made so I, I made these actually last year so slightly cheating 19th of November was cat I made these cool cat designs all kind of on, on the same thing but doing slightly different things with their tails and slightly different colors the 20th of November was music I did a saxophone with some music coming out of it 21st of November was bakery. I made this wedding cake. 22nd of November was flower. I did this sunflower. 23rd of November was fruit. So I made strawberry earrings and I'm so happy with these ones. These earrings just look, oh, oh I missed you. <laughs> oh dear. What was next after fruit? Fruit after. Eek. So Misty can join now. So after fruit was flame for the 24th of November and I did a oh dear so I did a little Christmas candle. 25th of November was a real challenge it was space and I was tossing up ideas on what I could do for this challenge piece. In the end I took an inspiration piece of what the solar system sort of looks like so I made this solar system piece as a replica of that photo so I worked on it for a few days leading up to it, but I finished it the night before and I would have liked to have had more stars, but the point of the challenge is to meet each day and, you know, post what you've got. So this is what I ended up with. I'm really happy with it. I really like it. This is another challenge piece where I've tried something new and this time what I did was I made these closed loose rolls, but then I put other colours inside it to sort of give it texture. Obviously the sun's coming from this side and the light is pushing this way, so the lightest colours were on this side and the slightly darker colours were on that side to sort of indicate shadow. Yeah, I'm actually super happy with it and I really like Jupiter and Saturn, but even just the other planets I'm happy with, but I didn't include Pluto. Oops. <laughs> 26th of November, black and white. I did these black and white earrings with the apparently it's called the beehive effect inside it I've always called it the rip curl effect but it's beehive I quite like these earrings 27th of November your favorite I posted my favorite piece I've ever made which is the Waratah the Waratah is the floral emblem of New South Wales where I live and I only have seen a real Waratah in real life in the last couple of months. I've seen so many photos of it and pictures and paintings but never a real one in the last couple of weeks 
I actually have bought my own Waratah plant and I've planted it out the backyard and so I'm very excited for when it flowers. This is definitely my favourite piece so far. 28th of November was alphabet. I sort of interpreted that as letters. I made a couple of words, acronyms, letters. 29th of November was spiral so I made this kind of quilled spiral where I got a rainbow of colours, stuck them all together and turned them into a spiral like that. Lucky last, the prompt for the 30th of November was vegetable. I made carrot earrings. I hadn't made them before. This was, I, I made these for the challenge and I don't think I ever would have made them if it wasn't for the challenge. And I'm super duper happy with these. The actual carrot is made up of two pieces and it's using that same technique as with the mushrooms where you make a tight coil and then you push the center through to sort of make a cone shape. So I made sort of like a shallow cone on for the top and then a, like a deeper cone for the bottom of the carrot, stuck it together and wound it round. But the leaves of the carrot is actually made of leftover pieces of paper from the Sydney Quillers meeting. I was like, that would be perfect for the leaves of the carrots. So I didn't even need to fringe this paper. It was already fringed from leftover paper from the Sydney Quillers. I think they are awesome. Uh, I learned a lot during this challenge. It was really good. So I noted some of the, the lessons that I had. Watercolour designs, it turns out to be just such a fantastic way of making a design. It gives a really good effect. So I'd, I'd never done it before. So I learned that during the challenge. Same with that leaf, the colour gradation looks amazing. So when you just sort of move into, from pinks to reds to oranges to yellows, it looks really effective. Slightly unexpected lessons was uh, not to use normal A4 paper, like I mentioned in the last reflection for the cactus the glue warps the paper and end up looking not that great. The other thing that I found interesting was actually using a pattern for the owl. Yeah, it just, it does make life a whole lot easier because one of the hardest parts about quilling I've found so far is coming up with your own designs. But when you can just follow a pattern, they give you the exact measurements, they show you how to lay it out. It makes it so much easier. <laughs> Chinese quilling was really interesting to try and I'm so excited to keep practicing that technique. 3D quilling, fantastic fun. It's really interesting. Like you will have seen, if you watched the interview with Leisha, all of her pieces basically are 3D, like the ship, the birdcage, the shoes. It's so cool. Rather than just having a picture that's 3D, like actually having an object that you can hold and you can see all the way around. It's so awesome. And making those little mushrooms, that's the first piece that I've really made, other than jewelry. It's like kind of like a scene, a 3D scene. And I had so much fun making it and I think it looks awesome. Having this challenge made me do pieces that I never would have done if it wasn't for this challenge. For example, the space scene, the backpack, the zodiac sign, the cactus, the owl, the book and the vegetable. I don't think I would have done this if it wasn't for a prompt as part of a challenge sort of making me do it and I'm, I'm really glad because they've turned out really well. Another unexpected lesson from the Quill November challenge was how good it is to sort of push yourself to share your work more often and get comfortable sharing on Instagram. And having that discipline, I think, is really important. It's been great. I, I really enjoyed seeing other artists' work. I'm following quite a few more quillers that I discovered through this challenge. And it's amazing how people interpret different prompts and the pieces that they come up with. Yeah, it's great. And it's, it was also good when people were giving feedback and parts that they liked. And that really helps me in my learning process. Yeah, so that's kind of what I want to reflect on is the art of the challenge. Anyone that knows me would know that I'm quite drawn to the idea of a challenge. I like challenges that have a very clear goal and end date. For example, with the Cool November challenge, it was a new piece every single day for 30 days. Very time constrained. And I've done other challenges in the past. So in 2014, I did a photo diary where I would take one photo every single day from that day, write the date and a caption and save it in an album that was 2014. And I just, I kind of set out at the time, the goal was just to take a photo every day. Uh, but what ended up happening was it captured so much that I wasn't expecting. Like I moved overseas that year, which at the start of January, I, I didn't expect that I'd be doing that. And it was amazing to see what, you know, I, I delivered on the challenge. Like I did take one photo every single day for a year. With, it sort of had unexpected uh, lessons in it. And some days when I, not much really happened that day. And I was like, what am I going to take a photo of today to, to put in my album? It made me go out 
and go see something new so I could take a photo of it. So I'd see, you know, beautiful new gardens or streets that I hadn't seen before just so that I could take a photo of it. Another challenge I did was in 2016, I backpacked through Europe and I decided I want a photo project of jumping through Europe. I'd set up my tripod and I'd do a burst and just jump in front of whatever monument or natural wonder and photograph it and then I'd put it all together in this movie. I delivered on that challenge, so every um, city that I visited, I did a sort of a jumping pose in, in front of it. But what I learned was, you know, how it brings people together and how much fun it is. Um, and so I'd, I'd actually meet people because they'd see me doing it and then they'd want to come join, which was awesome. Then in 2017, me and my partner went to America. He, he can juggle and he taught me how to juggle. So I was like, let's do juggling around America. So again, everywhere, every monument we went to, um, you know, every city we went to, we'd pick a, we'd set up the shot and juggle in between it. And it was awesome fun because like, it made other people laugh, anyone who was watching us. I got much better at juggling. <laughs> um, yeah, and it made for a really great video. In 2018, we did a big backpacking trip and we moved overseas again. We went from Dunedin in New Zealand to Berlin in Deutschland in Germany. And so I, I made a, a video and for this whole year, we danced from Dunedin to Deutschland. Everywhere we went in New Zealand, Nepal, Spain, France, England, um, all different parts of Europe, um, we did various dancing scenes. So, yeah, again, lots of people joined because they, they thought it was quite fun and funny. Uh, I learned different dancing techniques, not that I'm a great dancer. And it was really good. I think what I've learned a lot from those particular type of challenges, unexpectedly, is video editing. Because editing does take quite a long time without even realising it because I, I want to make these videos and I've got an idea of the song that I want and I know what footage I've got but I have to make the footage fit to the song and, you know, being time with the music, I'm getting a lot better at video editing. I think that, yeah, the lesson is... Setting yourself a challenge is, is so such a good idea, like coming up with an idea, figuring out a time when you're going to deliver it, having a very clear goal and end date is just the way I love working best. And it's also fantastic because you just don't know what other lessons you're going to learn throughout. And I think it's also how I sort of see the world in a way. I'll have a time where I'm thinking and planning and preparing and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this goal. So like juggling around America or dancing from Dunedin to Deutschland. Or when I saw the Quill November challenge, I was like, I'm going to do the Quill November. Or starting this YouTube channel, like I've got in my head that it's going to be for one year. Yeah, just see how I go and see what I learn. So I'm definitely open to other lessons and different things that I can learn. But I still have a very clear goal in mind. I think of it about like planning and setting out the goal and then just enjoying the process as I'm going through it, knowing that I'm, I'm working towards something at the end. So, you know, the Quilling Quarter Channel is a big challenge. This is a really big challenge for me. It's one year, I'm making lots of different types of videos and I'm pushing myself to learn. Part of the channel is doing how-to videos. So I make a piece and then I show you how I did it. So that's forcing me to learn new pieces and again, obviously forcing me to to get better at video editing so that their how-to video from your perspective actually sort of makes sense. Second is book review. So this is actually forcing me to read books more actively. I'm reading a book knowing that I'm going to talk about it and sort of analyse what it was about. And yeah, it just it changes how you read a book, to be honest. And then third is artist interviews. And this has been fantastic. I've only done one interview so far. But in exciting news, I do have another interview lined up in January. Yes, yeah, so and meeting different artists is ah, 
it's just amazing. And then fourthly and finally is these reflection videos. So it forces me to reflect on all these things that I've done, talk about what I've done in the previous few weeks, reflect on something and then talk about what I'm doing in the future. So having this discipline and this constraint, I, I benefit off. I, I really like having very clear goals to deliver on. The other thing about that I like about a challenge is that when it ends, you can look back on it and say, like, wow, that was really cool. Like, you know, it's amazing. This is what I thought was going to happen at the start of the challenge and look what actually happened. So yeah, that's my reflection. Challenges are awesome because they have very clear start and end dates and very clear goals. I like planning towards them. I like the unexpected lessons that come with them. And then I like looking back on them and thinking, wow, that was really cool what I did or what I've achieved or what I've learned. They're arbitrary and, you know, you don't need to do them, of course, but, you know, being disciplined and, you know, coming up with a challenge, making yourself do it, I think is a great, great thing to do. And this also applies with even like running challenges or cooking challenges. You know, you just come up with an idea and then you deliver on it and then you can look back on it and think, yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> That's what I've worked on in the last few weeks, uh, reflecting on the art of the challenge. And now I want to talk about what's coming up. Yeah, I have three things to tell you here, what's coming up. I have almost finished filming how I made all these Christmas cards and I am going to turn this into a video for next Friday. And so this is going to be a fun one. Next Friday the 18th will actually be my last video for 2020 because the following Friday is Christmas Day and then the Friday after that is New Year's Day. That My next video will be Friday the 8th of January and that video is going to be a reflection video and I'm going to outline all my goals for 2021 for the Quilling Quarter channel. So I've been writing down a lot of ideas and what I want to do, artists I'd like to meet, books that I want to review and pieces that I'd like to make. But one really big goal that I'd like your help with is I really want to interact and learn more about you watching this now. I'd like to get to know you guys and you know what you enjoy about this channel. Do you enjoy more the reflections, the book reviews, artist interviews or the how-to videos? If you've watched a couple of my videos so far and, and, and you enjoy it, I'd really like to hear from you. What do you like and, and what do you like less? And what would you want to see slightly differently? But most importantly, the main question I want to ask you is, how can we interact more? So one idea I had was if you're inspired to, to do any type of quilling or even if it's a piece that I've made um, and it inspires you to make a piece, like you could email it to me and then I could feature it in one of my videos for other people to see. Um, that's one idea. We definitely don't have to do it. But if you have other ideas, let me know. Let me know on, on this, this video in the comments below. And while I'm taking the, the two weeks off, I'll be, you know, working away and thinking and planning for next year and I'll incorporate those ideas into my plan for 2021. So, yeah, please let me know, you know, what, what do you like? What do you like slightly less? I'm, I'm very open to the feedback. And, yeah, what ideas do you have for how we can interact and, and share and get to know each other a bit more? Very keen to hear your ideas. One last thing to ask you. Because I plan to take two weeks off, so Christmas Day and New Year's Day, and not come back until the 8th of January. Apparently that's not very good for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, a lot of my videos are watched because they're suggested videos and people see them and then click on them um, and they're not necessarily subscribers. I've managed to get to I think 115 subscribers so far without ever asking please subscribe, please like, please share, please comment. But in this case I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to the channel purely because the YouTube algorithm won't be happy that I'm taking two weeks off and it's less likely to suggest the videos to other people. So to start back up again, I'm going to rely on you as subscribers. Please subscribe and, and hit the notification bell so that um, you see the, my first video and we can get the ball rolling again from the 8th of January. That's all from me. I've got my reindeer ears on now. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Next Friday will be a Christmas card how-to video, so please enjoy that. But otherwise, Thank you so much for following along with me for these first 20 videos. I've appreciated it so, so much. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed having you with me and I'm so excited for 2021. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and see you next year. Bye.